The role of fluorides in dental caries management. Let's first revisit some basics. The tooth as we know it is made up of hard tissues and soft tissues. The hard tissues are comprised of enamel and dentine. Enamel is one of the most hard structures of the human body and it is constituted of 96% of inorganic content. Dentine comprises 70% of inorganic content. The inorganic structure of tooth is, comp is comprised of hydroxyapatite, which is the main mineral component of the teeth. Hydroxyapatite is made up of calcium and phosphate ions primarily, which is bound by hydroxyl group that is composed of oxygen and hydrogen. Now what happens in case of caries formation? In conditions where the pH of the saliva decreases, that is it becomes more acidic and at a critical pH of 5.5 for enamel and 6.2 for dentine. So the critical pH is slightly higher for dentine because it has less of inorganic content and the critical pH is slightly lower for enamel because it has more of inorganic content. At this critical pH, the hard tissues undergo demineralization and as the hydroxyapatite crystal crumbles calcium and phosphate ions leach out into the saliva so this leads to weakening of the hard tissue structure when the salivary ph is restored as a compensatory mechanism and the ph increases remineralization occurs and the calcium and phosphate ions from the saliva enter into the hydroxyl appetite crystals wherein they are bound by the hydroxyl groups. Now taking a microscopic look at situations which induce plaque formation. Herein the pH decreases due to the accumulation of plaque, demineralization increases and the plaque enters the enamel rods leading to solubilization of the enamel structures. So the hydroxyapatite crystals are gradually dissolved by this organic acids in the plaque. And as the hydroxyapatite crystals disintegrate, this leads to crumbling of the enamel rods in those regions, which is clinically evident in the form of a white spot formation. If the situation is allowed to persist, it may gradually progress to caries. So based on this mechanism, in order to prevent caries, demineralization must be decreased and remineralization must be promoted. And a suitable agent to do this is fluoride. Going back to the hydroxyapatite crystal structure, so we saw that hydroxyapatite is made up of calcium and phosphate ions and it is bound by hydroxyl group composed of oxygen and hydrogen. What fluoride does is the fluoride ions replace this hydroxyl ion group in the hydroxyapatite crystal. So now it forms fluorapatite. Fluorapatite is stronger than hydroxyapatite. It is less soluble and more resistant to caries process. So this leads to preserving the crystal structure or the inorganic structure of the heart tissues. Going back to the microscopic view, so this was the white spot lesion which was formed by crumbling of the hydroxyapatite crystals in the presence of plaque. Now when fluoride is applied where the, the hydroxyapatite crystals were disintegrated, it forms fluorapatite by replacing the hydroxyl ions. This fluorapatite is more resistant to dissolution by the inorganic acids. It further enhances the uptake of calcium and phosphate ions into the demineralized tissue. So by preventing further disintegration of the enamel rods, it prevents demineralization and by enhancing the uptake of calcium and phosphate ions, it promotes remineralization. Remember this point here that remineralization can occur only for a non-cavitated lesion such as a white spot lesion. Once the caries process has reached a state of irreversible destruction, therein you need other interventional methods in addition to fluoride to restore the tooth structure. To provide maximum benefits, fluoride must be available to interfere with the demineralization and the remineralization process. It should be available in small concentrations that is in ppm within its defined limit. In the right place that is in the biofilm or in the saliva so that it is immediately available to the damaged tooth structure and it should be present at the right time that is 
when the sugar exposure has occurred so within 20 minutes of the sugar exposure we know that the critical ph takes about 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes to achieve and the fluoride should be available within this time frame so as to provide maximum benefits Fluoride as a remineralizing agent can be available by using dentrifices, a varnish which is done in the dentist's office, using mouth rinses or gel and sealants which are again done in the dentist's office. So this was about the role of fluorides in dental caries management. I hope you liked the video. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.